Warning, the following opinions are that of my own and not of the larger whole of any fandom. Also, while major adult content will never be shown and or allowed, some adult language may be used at any time. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Zeltrex Millennium here, also known as Jesse Elias, because I don't like to hide behind my name sometimes. Doing my first standard interview. Say hi, man. Hi, this must be the first ever interview. How exciting. I'm, <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> yeah. I'm interviewing Mike freaking Pollock. Well, I've heard of him. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be fun. We can only hope. Yeah. All right, I've got, I got quite a few things here. So, I want to start with an icebreaker. I've met a few voice actors in my time, and I managed to bring back a lot of fond memories they had, like Joe Aukman when he worked on the anime Shinzo. So, here's a bonkers one for you. Fighting Foodons when you voice Hawk Dog Gaunet, the Hot Dog Sheriff Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon thing. How'd you feel about that show to the point where you'd be voicing a humanoid hot dog? Uh, there are uh, no more surprises left in the world of uh, voiceover, especially for animation. Uh, I am there to breathe life into things that don't have a life of their own and speak for the things that can't speak for themselves. So the crazy the carrier, the crazier the character, the happier I am. So it was a fantastic challenge. And I'm delighted that I got a chance to make the director happy by doing uh, whatever he wanted. Wait. All right. Now, let's get into the bigger stuff. I'm actually going to start with a Yu-Gi-Oh! question. When Yu-Gi-Oh! was around Season 4 or so, you played Yu-Gi's first opponent in the Orichalco's arc, not to mention Professor Hawkins and Bonaparte in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I'm sure the scripts had a template of how those characters should act, but what did you do to put your spin on them? By the way, I did not like Bonaparte when he first showed up and thought he was an asshole. But he well, got he better can't... later on. You can't please everyone. Uh, yeah. Whenever I whenever I create any character, it's a very collaborative process. The director uh, tells me what they have in mind, and I bring uh, whatever I can think of to the table, and then we make little minor adjustments here and there. Higher, slower, faster, slower, lower. And uh, until we eventually arrive, it is something that everybody's happy with. Cool. But yeah, um, keep it on with the Yu-Gi-Oh! theme a little bit here. Uh, did you actually know that GX actually had a Season 4 as the finale instead of four kids screwing up the ending to Season 3 by playing Jane and died? Well, the thing about uh, doing what we do is uh, we're on a need-to-know basis. So if they don't need us for another season, they don't tell us that there's another season because we don't need to know. So I may have known, but it wasn't relevant at the time. Yeah. Well, even, th even then, uh, Bonaparte only showed up as a cameo in Episode 1, and from what I've heard, Season 4 was a bit too dark for Fork at the, for the dub. Well, who knows what the future holds? Yeah. All right. Next one, and this is actually a neat one, because when I used to do Toonami Watch Parties with a couple of mates, I became a big fan of two things when they premiered on the block. Dr. Stone and the anime movie Promare. And ironically, both of them have had you in bit parts. Yakov Nikitin in Dr. Stone and Deus Prometh in Promare. Was it easy for you to put a, Rum a Russian accent on Yakov in Dr. Stone? I almost didn't recognize uh, you at first. I'm delighted to say that I've, uh, I'm a fairly skilled dialectician, both uh, by training and uh, by osmosis. I can study a voice and replicate it fairly accurately within a few minutes. So I'm delighted they asked, and I happen to have uh, some Russian heritage. Not that that particularly helped, because I've not really spoken to any Russian relatives. But um, it uh, seemed to come fairly naturally, and they seemed to like it. Awesome. I also want to hear your take on when Media Blasters tried dubbing Gal Gygar and you played one of the villains, because wikis can only tell you so much. Uh, it was a quick visit to a studio, a couple hours in a room, but... Uh, just like any session, I we figured out what character voice uh, they wanted, and I gave them what they wanted, and uh, then they let me leave. Ah, kind of sad that they only managed to do 25 episodes before they stopped. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's uh, who knows what, what various uh, licensing agreements and contracts were written, but there's a reason for everything. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um... I'm avoiding trying to ask each question to sound the same, so my apologies in advance, but here's Sorry. another weird one for you. 
Hunted Secrets and Seekers. Did your agent tell you about that show and you wanted to check it out to see what character you wanted to voice for that? How, how did recording uh, for that come about? That was a uh, direct booking for my uh, various relationships with NYAV Post and Four Kids. Uh, they had auditions going around. They invited me to audition. They brought me in. They liked what I did. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Nice. Yeah, um, I am definitely avoiding um, Eggman stuff until the very end, because honestly, if I asked Eggman questions the whole time, it would be, get very, very stale. Sure. He's, he's, he's still only a small part of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, but that's okay, too. Yeah. I'm also... And I'm I'm going to be prefacing this for everybody going to be asking about this in the comments later. We're I'm not going to talk about the whole Roger Craig Smith and the other voice actors getting let go from Sonic for the whole Sonic Prime Netflix show. That is not my place to talk about that kind of stuff at all. Fair Besides, enough. I'm just starting to voice. I'm just starting to do interviews here, so cut me some slack. Onward to new adventures, as they say. Yeah. I'm also trying to avoid um, asking want to sees pertaining to the stuff I like, like um, Power Rangers, because I can actually see you voicing a monster of the week from Power Rangers or even possibly a general. Well, if I could walk in and demand to record on shows, I would be working all the time. But it's really based <laughs> on invitations to audition and then they have to like the audition. So who knows what the future holds? Yeah. So, OK. Wow, I, should, I really should have written down uh, several more questions because I only managed to come up with nine. Okay. We'll stop so, for time. Uh, what, what else? What else? What else? Um, what have you done recently in the uh, voice recording industry? All manner of things. Lots of uh, uh, commercials running for IHOP that uh, folks might have seen. A um, bunch of other animes, uh, Akudama Drive. Uh, some other stuff that uh, still has not yet been released, so I can't spoil it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some with really long names that I can't think of right now. Uh, yeah. Weathering with You was another uh, fine film that hit theaters for a little while. Um, oh, what else? is There's going to be a podcast called Earth Eclipsed, an audio drama, that I'm mm -hmm. very pre uh, proud of my uh, appearance in one of the episodes. Um, all manner of things, and uh, just like the uh, voiceover industry as a whole, I have no idea what I'm doing as soon as Monday, so who can tell? <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, I actually work with the Hero Club crew, and they wanted me to ask you something regarding the 4Kids Double of Ultraman Tiga. What did you actually do for that, like voicing characters or doing stuff like the DVD bonus features or whatever? Could you clarify that for us? Sure. I was purely additional voices, people in crowds. Okay. Well, that's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit sad for my buddy Wheel. So, whoops. As I, uh, one of my favorite adages, uh, there are no small parts, just small actors, and I don't think of myself as a small actor. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. My la my last question is really the last one I got. I really should I really should have prepared more for this. All right. All right. So I guess to leave this very short interview off, let's do the obvious. Dr. Ivo Eggman Robotnik from Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's just go it. through the major points of your history voicing this character and how your portrayal really stood the test of time from several games and cartoons. Any fascinating any fascinating stories to tell? Also, what did you think about the live-action Sonic movie, if you don't mind my asking? Apologies if you get asked that a lot. Sure. Uh, as with uh, almost any role, it all started with an audition. I've been doing stuff at 4Kids Productions for Kirby Right Back At You and Ultimate Muscle. And the same production team at 4Kids uh, that produced Kirby Right Back At You were also uh, producing Sonic X when they got the license to do that. And they were very keen to have me audition for Dr. Eggman. So they sent me some clips of Dean Bristow to try and do a voice match. And I listened and uh, listened and listened and came back with something that sounded like Dean Bristow. Right, 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 right. Uh, went and did an audition. Sega was, I guess, not convinced. So four kids had me come back for a callback. Did the same. I'm Dean Bristow. Right, 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 right. And there was one more round of callbacks after that. And uh, finally, I guess somebody at Sega changed their mind and said, yeah, he'll do. And uh, mm -hmm. then we... Uh, 
started with Sonic X uh, in 2003, transitioned to uh, the cast taking over the games in 2005. There was a uh, high-profile recasting in 2010 uh, when they asked me to re-audition. I re-auditioned. They seemed to like it again. And uh, that uh, went on through 2010, and uh, let's hope beyond. Yeah, that's, that's 20, really nice. 2020. That's, that's really nice because a lot of people really love your portrayal of Dr. Eggman. More so to the point where they literally cannot see anybody else do the role. Like, at all. Well, as I like to remind people, I don't own the role in any sense of the word. I'm like a valet parking your car. You trust me to park your car, bring it back, but you still own the car. I'm just borrowing it with your permission for a certain period of time whenever the car needs to be parked. So I appreciate the thought of ownership, but I, I have no ownership, either real or virtual. So the character still belongs to Sega, and I'm delighted that they asked me to voice him for stuff whenever they choose to ask me for stuff. Uh, that's good. And I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the same would probably apply to Roger Craig Smith if I if I asked him the same thing. It works for all actors. Actors don't own their characters. Going all the mm-hmm. way back to Shakespeare. Shakespeare writes a play. Anyone can play Hamlet. You don't own Hamlet. You're Hamlet for the amount of time that you're performing Hamlet. Then someone else is Hamlet. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, but yeah, that's literally everything I've written down. I, I didn't think I'd be done w- with this thing so quick. I haven't even started the timer for the uh, 15 minutes, so I was just so excited. Oh. I just never never thought about um, starting the timer, so that's Thank you. Like most, like most of what we do, it takes a lot less uh, time than people think. Yeah, I'll, def- I'll definitely be remembering that for the future, so... I hope you guys all love this short interview with Mike Pollock, but what can we see of Mike Pollock in the future? Best thing to do, uh, follow me, let's say, on Twitter is the most uh, active place for information. Uh, it's a Mike on Twitter. You can also check my website. Uh, stuff I know that I can mention, because it's already been announced, is the Earth Eclipsed podcast. You can search for that wherever fine podcasts are found. Um there, I would like to believe there'll be more IHOP commercials in the future, but who can tell? Um, and uh, chock full of other surprises. Watch on social media. All right. And, you, and of course, you can check out all of my stuff on social media at Zeltrix Millennium and such like that. But, yeah, I, I really love this opportunity that you've given me, Mike. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much for asking. It was a pleasure to be here. Oh, yeah. But yeah, will I do more interviews in the future? We'll just have to wait and see. So, catch you guys later in the next one. Peace! Damn!